Thomas Piketty, The Economics of Inequality. Welcome to our summary of The Economics of Inequality by Thomas Piketty, where we will unravel the complex notions of income inequality and redistribution among Western nations. We will examine the various taxation systems, redistributive measures, labor incomes, and the impact of capital versus labor on economic growth. The summary also delves into the importance of education, healthcare spending, and the effects of globalization on income disparities. Thomas Piketty presents invaluable insights into understanding the root causes and consequences of economic inequality, and potential pathways for effective redistribution strategies. The Illusion of Inequality When comparing inequality levels among Western nations, it's important to consider their different labor classifications, taxes, and redistribution policies. Governments use various methods for fiscal redistribution, including taxes, social transfers, and subsidizing education and health care. Although it may seem like French employers pay a higher proportion of their output to labor than their Danish counterparts, the reality is that employees pay for all employer taxes. French employees don't pay taxes on income from social transfers but take home only a portion of their gross salary, while Danish wage earners receive their full wages but pay individual taxes on all sources of income, including government transfers. Therefore, workers in France and Denmark earn equivalent wages despite the different tax and transfer regimes. Nordic countries apply an income tax to pensions and other social program income, which artificially increases their income tax percentage relative to GDP by 10%. However, this practice doesn't result in substantial fiscal redistribution. Overall, it's essential to analyze and understand different factors that contribute to inequality levels among Western nations to avoid drawing inaccurate conclusions. The Stability of Capital and Labor Share The balance of the economy's proceeds between capital and labor has remained steady over generations. The increase in workers' income and productivity comes from economic and productivity growth, not from gaining ground against capitalist business owners. Taxing capital excessively can hurt a country's productivity and negatively affect workers' standard of living. Most of the growth in inequality in developed countries comes from the widening gaps in labor incomes, with self-selection accounting for almost half the increase in inequality in the U.S. between 1970 and 1990. Education spending, progressive income taxes, fiscal transfers, and minimum wage rates are government measures that could reduce inequality. The economy's proceeds have been consistently divided between capital and labor at around one-third and two-thirds, respectively, over generations, with capital's share slightly on the rise. Workers' income increases in rich countries come from economic and productivity growth, not from gaining ground against capitalist business owners. Taxing capital excessively can hurt a country's productivity and workers' standard of living in the long run. Inequality in developed countries comes from widening gaps in labor incomes, where the top earners capture more of an economy's output than low earners. Self-selection is also a major factor, with social selection accounting for nearly half the increase in inequality in the U.S. between 1970 and 1990. To reduce inequality, Government measures, such as education spending, progressive income taxes, fiscal transfers, and minimum wage rates, could be implemented. Tackling Income Inequality A market economy relies on clear prices for labor and capital to function efficiently. Government policies aimed at reducing inequality could distort free market prices, resulting in unintended effects. Efforts to combat labor income inequality can involve high minimum wages or union pressures, leading to employers substituting mechanization or reducing employment. Free market economist Milton Friedman proposed a universal basic income as a remedy to distortion concerns, allowing the less well-off to participate in the job market without altering incentives or distorting wages. Tackling Economic Inequality Left-leaning solutions for economic inequality Experts on the left often advocate for nationalization and greater union power to address economic inequality instead of relying solely on taxation and direct transfers. While these remedies may ultimately reduce the demand for labor, 
these experts point out that countries with steady declines in union membership have seen the most severe increases in inequality since the 1980s. Unions can improve communication between employers and workers and provide organized wage schedules that encourage employees to invest in their skills. High union mandated wages can also substitute for government social programs. Some economists are against raising minimum wages due to possible market distortions. However, studies have proven that increasing minimum wages has not negatively impacted unemployment rates. In fact, it has increased labor participation rates when the previous minimum wage was exceptionally low. The best approach to reducing inequality in the capitalist market is to let free labor market prices produce optimum results reflecting labor productivity. However, governments must use taxation and spending to counteract the natural unequal rewards of a capitalist market. To achieve this, taxes on low-skilled and semi-skilled labor, and taxes that make this labor more expensive for employers, should be minimized, while taxes on capital profits and top earners could be raised. By implementing these solutions, society can create a more equal labor market. Human Capital and Economic Inequality Right-wing economists justify economic inequality through human capital theory, which links a person's skills and productivity to their income. They argue that as individuals enhance their human capital, they are rewarded with higher pay and better opportunities. Critics, however, claim that these theories only legitimize inequality based on unobservable differences in human capital. Furthermore, governments' tax and spend programs may undermine individuals' incentives to invest in their human capital. Human capital theory is also a part of the globalization narrative that seeks to explain why manufacturing workers in rich countries lost their jobs to workers in developing countries. However, the extent to which trade has affected inequality remains a matter of debate. Redistributive Policies for Inequality The efficient and free market worldview of economists who emphasize human capital theory provide support for certain kinds of redistributive policies, including fiscal redistribution and free elementary education. Additionally, some degree of state-funded health care and unemployment benefits can be justified through the economists' approach to thinking about missing or inefficient markets. These themes also apply to economic development issues, where tackling inequality can be achieved through small-scale credit provision. The tax system and income inequality The tax system in developed countries takes a consistent proportion of people's incomes, and fiscal spending on healthcare and education plays a role in reducing income inequality. Policy makers believe that high taxes might disincentivize people in the top tax brackets from working. However, research shows that low-wage earners have a stronger incentive to work than middle- and high-income earners. Poverty traps are more critical in managing income inequality. Though progressive taxes on income and inheritance have greatly contributed to reducing capital concentration, difficulties in taxing capital remain. A flat tax on wealth could help reduce income inequality by addressing the consolidation of income at the top. In France, a worker on minimum wage is better off than their American peer, who has to pay for their health insurance and education. In conclusion, The Economics of Inequality by Thomas Piketty reveals the multifaceted nature of income inequality through a comprehensive analysis of labor market dynamics, taxation policies, and wealth redistribution. The book highlights the vital role played by fiscal policies, such as education and healthcare spending, in shaping inequality disparities. Moreover, Piketty contends that the stable proportions of capital and labor shares in an economy reinforce the potential dangers of excessive taxation on capital. Through extensive research on evolving inequality factors like human capital and globalization, the book emphasizes the need for efficient redistributive policies and market interventions. Ultimately, the insights offered by Piketty provide a deeper understanding of the complexities surrounding economic inequality and the levers available to address it.